welcome back. back. <laughs> we have part three. Part three. Yes, <laughs> of our series Meditation and Bible Study. And again, we have Gabby here with us, and she's going to continue where we left off on our Bible study tips and our different applications, mm -hmm. uh, methods of reading the Bible. So if you had a specific way before, but now you can see it in a different way, uh, hopefully this helps out. So I want to mention again, if you haven't watched the first part or the second part, uh, go ahead and watch it and then we'll, you know, you'll see the other methods she used before. And also I want to say meditation, if you're just clicking on this for the first time, it's uh, meditating on the word of God. It's not the worldly meditation where you're doing breathing exercises and feeling your fingers or finding the inner you <laughs> yeah so it's not about all you and your headspace in your world <laughs> not that type of meditation from the world but meditating on the word of god and having that communication with god daily day and night and that's it says on the bible day and night, night. <laughs> <laughs> yes so we want to have him in our prayers on our thoughts all the time conversing with him mm -hmm. throughout the day orar sin, sin cesar <laughs> pray without ceasing so um we're gonna get into that make sure to watch the first two parts and we're gonna go into her, um her methods <laughs> yes so let's dig in um <laughs> so uh in the last video we went over the soap method um it's scripture uh observation application and prayer that's the, a great way to remember it. Um, and then we went over the uh, character quality method where you choose a character quality you would like to work on in your life and a study and study what the Bible says about it. So you can either study a character in the Bible um, or you can um, just look for what the, the Word of God says about that specific character. So I was sharing with um, Kim earlier about how at one point, you know, I wanted wisdom, so I looked at, you know, Proverbs, and you can also look, see that in the life of Sol King Solomon. And then the next one I would like to share with you guys is the thematic method, which is uh, select the Bible's theme to study, then think three to five questions you'd like to have answered about that theme. Next, study all the references you can find on your theme and rec record the answers to your questions. For example, you can do one on forgiveness. You know, sometimes we don't have, you know, a good understanding of what forgiveness looks like. And we want to be able to honor God in our lives to be able to forgive how he has commanded us to forgive. Um, and I've done one uh, not too long ago on friendships uh, because at one point I was just like, mm, I don't think these are being good friends to me. What is like, should I just cut them loose, Lord? Like, you know, like I, it was more like a victim kind of thing. Like I was just like, nah, like they're not good friends. They're fake friends, things like that, you know? And so as I was reading um, different verse, uh, verses on friendships, um, we see that in uh, David and Jonathan and in the book of Pro Proverbs, we see a lot about friendships as well. And I came to realize that, you know you're not being the kind of friend that you know reflects Christ and so it brought a lot of um, conviction for me and where I had to work on the type of friend I was to other people and um, and that's mainly the thing because um, we have to look at ourselves first before we start pointing the finger at other people as the Bible does tell us about taking the the speck off your eye <laughs> yeah in order no, to, to, <laughs> to take um, the speck out of your your friend or somebody else's eye and then you have a log in your eye oh okay yeah, yeah so try to tell them about it when you have a speck in your eye <laughs> uh -huh, yeah when you have a whole log oh so yeah, a log, yeah check yourself first you know so that was very um beneficial for me and you know i i was able to reap a lot of good things through that and so if you're interested in doing that method then you know that would be a great way to start as well yeah mm -hmm. uh, a theme yeah thematic so method saying forgiveness or a friendship mm -hmm. or joy or what are the, some, some other themes uh you can do joy you can do wisdom um salvation oh yeah that's a good you thing. know the love of god as well you know we sometimes love people maybe not the same way god you know describes his love we have conditions and god doesn't have technically conditions mm -hmm. that will ha have him stop loving us yeah and like that theme if you're looking up the theme of forgiveness in the Bible, you know, we might forgive a different way if we didn't read the Bible. 
Yeah. It's like, oh, well, this person didn't say sorry to me, so I'm not going to forgive them. When the Bible says even... If they in, don't... Yeah, they don't say it, you have to forgive. Mm-hmm. To forgive others the way he's already forgiven you. And there's also, like, if you don't forgive, then he doesn't forgive you. Yeah, and you can see that throughout the Bible, the parable mm-hmm. of the king and the servant as well. Um, we see that forgiveness the way god forgives us we should be also able to forgive other people we are known to be able to hold someone's sin against them yeah because god doesn't do that with us yeah we're not supposed to be the greater judge mm-hmm. where it's like i have the authority whether or not to <laughs> yeah. forgive you not. you have to humble yourself mm-hmm. and remember that god forgave you already so you have to forgive everything yeah yeah, so that's the theme method. Mm-hmm. So those are three. The, so the soap, the thematic method, the character quality method. And we wanted to go over a couple of uh, principles to help you interpret the Bible accurately. So um, context is really, really important. Um, as we ex- explained early in the videos, inductive Bible study, you know, the three main things is observation, interpretation, and application. And observation is key. So for example, in 2 Timothy 2.16, it tells us to avoid worldly and empty chatter. Does this mean Christians should not tell funny stories? What do you guys think? No. No, right? You know, if we read the context of that scripture, it it tells it's talking about the gospel and the need to handle it correctly, not whether or not a Christian to say funny stories. So at that time, there was arguments on like stuff about the gospel that it's just like don't don't waste your time on empty chatter like that you know Mm -hmm. and it's it wasn't referring to you know jokes you know you can tell jokes (laughs) yeah you can tell their jokes but when you're joking about the bible like that's god's Uh word (laughs) yeah like not waste your time arguing on you know simple things because i mean we see that all the time on social media where where christians are arguing with christians about something and it's just like how about we go and share the gospel instead of just spending time behind the computer and, you know, arguing about something. Mm -hmm. Um, The next one would be always seek the full counsel of the word of God. So in John 15, 7, it says, uh, Jesus says, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. Does that mean you can ask anything at all from God and he will give it to you? The answer is, sorry, guys, it's no. (laughs) You know, God's not going to give you just whatever you wish you know he's not gonna if someone were to be like god if i i need money so i'm gonna rob this person's house because i need money you know you're gonna provide you're gonna provide by letting me go free no (laughs) (laughs) you know or like someone you know that's dating somebody else break that up so i can marry that person you know and like Like, i meant to be with that person yeah (laughs) it's meant for me it's just like no that's not gonna happen you You have to see where your heart's at yeah and it has to be according to his will you know there's a common um interpretation where it's like uh god will give you the desires of your heart but it has to be according to his will that you delight in him Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so someone who's delighting in him who's meditating on his word day and night he's gonna want his will too he's not gonna be or she is gonna be seeking like oh yeah break that up so i can get with that person yeah like that's you're not having god's character right there but if you're delighting yourself in the lord you're getting his character you're getting his love his patience his kindness your uh your thoughts start transforming Mm -hmm. there's a transformation of the mind and his will and you you get to know him more and your thoughts you guys are more in one accord you guys are more like a two peas in a pod (laughs) and even your desires change like right now maybe your desires are more on like you know um secular things like a career Mm -hmm. and and that's not bad at all that's not bad but sometimes there gets to a point where you you still ask for those things but then you ask for god help this person or provide for this person guide me so i can be able to witness for other people and that's more that's according to his will and everything you want to start in it's going to be like to honor and glorify him yeah and everything you do it's going to be for him Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. your desires do change (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. and then uh remember scripture will never contradict itself um interpret scripture literally so um Sometimes when we're reading the word of God, uh, for instance, with Proverbs and Psalms, we can see similes and metaphors and, you know, where you would have to kind of read through it to maybe sometimes understand what the message is through. Um, But then compared to Genesis and Isaiah, where it's more um, like prophetic and historic. So uh, you have to determine whether it is describing something or um, encouraging to do something. 
I know there's a Proverbs, I believe, where it's talking about a woman yelling out in the streets, and oh, it's wisdom. wisdom. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's giving you the example of a lady yelling out in the streets because sometimes the wisdom is there, but we're not listening. Yeah. We overlook. So it's just a kind of like a metaphor and simile, as it had yeah. mentioned. So make sure to interpret it correctly. Don't actually think there's actually a woman. A la- like wisdom yeah. is going to be yelling at you. Oh, like how does wisdom look like? Is she a brunette? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you have to be sure you're also interpreting it correctly and asking God before you read too. Let your Holy Spirit be the one who guides me. Don't let it be my own human thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, also look for the author's intended meaning of the passage. So in Judges 6, it tells us the story of Gideon's fleece. However, this particular chapter is not teaching us that the way to know God's will for sure is to put on a fleece. It's just an exa- It's just telling you the story. So it's descriptive. It's telling you the story of Gideon and how he found the will of God by putting on the fleece. That doesn't mean that you have to put on fleece to find the will of God. Yeah. So just things to keep in mind as you're reading. And then always check your conclusions by using a reliable commentary. So sometimes we'll come up with my, our own conclusions of what we're reading. Um, but we always have to check if it's it's within what we're reading or it's completely out, which sometimes does tend to happen. I've had that happen with me and where I have to go back to certain commentaries. Commentaries who are reliable. Um, I usually use the John MacArthur Study Bible, and it's been really good for me and um, look up other sources online on to see what is their commentary on certain verse um, that maybe I didn't catch, but other people caught, which mm-hmm. has been good for me. And lastly, questions to ask when applying scripture. So um, what does the, the passage teach you? So that's something you want to have in mind as you're reading. Um, does this section of scripture expose any errors in your beliefs or behaviors? So as we had mentioned in our personal experience, as we read, we got conviction on personal behaviors that we were having and um, commandments that we may have not obeyed. And uh, what is God's instruction to you as his child, for instance? Is there any things that you have to pursue, any new commandments that maybe you didn't acknowledge before? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I had shared with you when we were talking about the topic about how uh, we sometimes say that, oh, God bless you, but we don't really do anything to bless that person. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Where, like, we know someone's struggling and says, like, God bless you, but instead of uh, us having the ability to do so, we mm-hmm. don't bless that person. Mm-hmm. And so maybe for me at that point, when I read that pa- that passage, it was more of, like, a new commandment. Like, if you know and are able to, then you know, yeah. make the effort to do it and be obedient to God, to be a blessing to other people. Mm-hmm. I remember, this one might be a little controversial, but I remember reading, like, if you have the ability to bless someone, bless it, and someone's asking you, bless them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, in gas stations or, or other places where someone might come up to you and ask for a dollar for or for gas or for food, and you reject them, like, because, no, they might do drugs. They might <laughs> yeah. do something. So, like, you give that wisdom, and then, like, okay, so... But you know God said that if you have the ability to bless them, bless them. So like, um, like hey, like I'm going to go buy you like a snack. <laughs> I'm going to go get you some water. I'm going to, uh, like, sure, what do you want? But you have that ability. Uh, when you see that scripture and then you see it being applied to your life, mm-hmm. it's like, are you actually going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, or are you just going to be like, God bless you, sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's so common for us to say God bless you and then not really do anything back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's important to have him speak to us and like how do you want us to bless others and like if someone's asking me for help for a certain thing or for prayer for something it's not just like yeah i'll pray for you (laughs) yeah and then forget Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so those are all important things that you can have in mind while you're you're reading the word and allowing it to transform you in your daily walk you know like how we mentioned, well, I mentioned in uh, friendships, how I perceived my friendships a certain way. And then after reading certain parts in the Bible about friendships, I was, you know, challenged to change certain behaviors um, that I was having with my friends. And so um, that is basically one of the gifts and, you know, benefits of meditating in the word, um, doing inductive Bible studies, um, and just taking that time to be bees that actually lay on the flower and obtain the honey. And instead of just, you know, passing by. (laughs) Yes. 
Yeah, so it's important to meditate on the word because when you come up with these situations, you already know what to do because mm-hmm. you have already learned what God wants to tell you. I mean, what he spoke to you and he wants you to do. And he says, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. Mm-hmm. So when you love a person, you really want to get to know them more. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And as Colossians 3.16 says, um, let the Lord of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Amen. To one another. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, that's encouraging. Yeah. And I think of that verse of um, where two are better than one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one comes to friendships too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because one can fall, but the other one can pick them up. Yeah, and after you do these studies, it also, you know, helps you practice what for First Timothy 3.15 says about, you know, being able to answer the question when someone asks, like, who, who's your hope in? You are able to explain to them and witness to them. Mm-hmm. You're prepared at all times, and that is what they command us to do mm-hmm. and be doers of the word. Yeah, you don't want someone coming up to you and like, oh, like, what do they teach you at your church to to do this? And you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's important to know your faith and to know who God is on your own mm-hmm. before like, oh, like, let me ask my pastor. <laughs> I mean, you, you can. You, you can ask a pastor. Go ahead, do that. <laughs> yeah, but like we should also be just prepared, you mm-hmm. know, be prepared. to. And if you're prepared, you're not only benefiting that person, you're also benefiting yourself. You're more mm-hmm. confident in in what your belief is. And you're more eager to share what you believe in to other people. Um, the way witnessing goes is you talk about what you love, like, I mean, in secular things, if you love something, you'll talk about it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I, everyone that knows me knows that I like, I love coffee and I, you know, I have a cat and I love cats, cat stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and that's what I don't talk about it all the time. But, you know, <laughs> they, I always make sure people know that about me or that's something that I share. So as we fall more and more in love with God, that'll be the first thing that we start talking to people about. And it's, it's, we sometimes see witnessing as something like, you know, I don't know. But if you love something, you don't, you don't, you don't it care. It just naturally comes yeah, out. Yeah, you like you're just going to start sharing it with anybody and because you want them to know and love who God is for you. Yeah. And I remember, help them understand. I remember one time my teacher was mentioning how uh, my others, I have a couple sisters, but once he was mentioning about one sister, how he, he was saying that she said that she doesn't get along with the younger one. Mm-hmm. And he's like, how about you? How do you get along with her? I'm like, I get along with her good. I'm like, we're like best friends, you know, <laughs> we do this, <laughs> these stuff together. And then he was like, I forgot what he had mentioned. But then I said, I'm like, it's like a flower. <laughs> I was like 15, 16. I was like already with this wisdom. <laughs> but I'm like, it's like a flower. Uh, you plant it, you give it water, it grows. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you see it flourish. But if you don't hang out with a person, you're not watering it. You're not, like, uh, you're not giving it any attention. You're, that relationship is going to die or it's not going to be good. You know, mm-hmm. it's, you're going to have like a, it's going to show through your dead flower. <laughs> and then um, and I mentioned something else about the Bible, but I didn't tell him Matthew verse 16. Like, <laughs> like I didn't say that, but like uh, different situations would come up and I, I say like a Bible verse or something and it's because of that it just word. comes out naturally. yeah it's because what's in your heart is gonna come out through your tongue mm-hmm. so uh what you speak with your tongue is what's meditating in your heart in the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks yes <laughs> bible verse see it just, <laughs> oh, just come <laughs> so uh we're gonna share so we shared some of the bible methods but now we're gonna share our own ways of how we have been studying the bible so do you want to go first or should i go first or um you can go first okay so i had mentioned how i'm gonna be sharing with you guys my journal from 2011 <laughs> Ooh, the early two oh no those are not the early 2010s <laughs> i don't know <laughs> um yeah but i want to mention before or maybe i'll mention it after just the way i would read and meditate before versus the way i read and meditate now because this was like 10 years ago mm-hmm And my walk with God has also changed, where before it was him speaking directly to me, like what happened that day, or I'll read the word and then the next day something happens, and then um, it's just correcting me. 
and him mostly showing me his love and the way I would read the Bible back then it was I would only I had us one free little Bible that they passed out in middle school <laughs> outside oh. it was an orange Bible oh, thank little. God if you pass them out at Wells Middle School <laughs> <laughs> like and you thought nothing was gonna happen <laughs> that's how I started uh learning more about God and it wasn't until years later because I was already in high school <laughs> but um so I would read that Bible and just open it randomly. So, and it's only the New Testament and it's included the book of Proverbs and Psalms. So uh, I made sure to like read it and just try to do everything that was written in it because mm -hmm. I just loved God and I had been saved and uh, I wanted more of him. So I'm gonna go into it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna read one time God was speaking to me and I didn't really understand it at first because it took and it was like a matter of three days so in my journal little Kim right here <laughs> 2011 um, I put this week like on Monday and Tuesday and then I was reading and on Tuesday when I read again I noticed it was talking about the same thing kind of of not slandering so then I felt like okay I think God is trying to warn me warn me of something and during this time, yeah, I had opened my Bible and had read something about slandering. And then the next day, I opened my Bible and read something about slandering. And I was like, oh, God, are you trying to tell me something? Mm -hmm. And when I read the word slandering, I thought slandering means slouching. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I thought it meant, like, slouching, like, going back. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to go back. Backsliding. Back to backsliding, yeah. I'm like, God, I'm not going to backslide. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to go back to the world, back to my old ways. So, um... But I prayed thinking slandering is going back to the world. Yeah, so that's, I'm mentioning that, going back to the world. So I prayed for God to keep me in his hands and to remind me of him so I would not want to go back to the world and disobedience. <laughs> and then on Wednesday morning at school, I had a situation come up where I ended up slandering against someone. And they tried to provoke me. It was like some people provoking me to like uh, get mad at a person. And I did kind of get mad at a person. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this person, like, <laughs> does this, uh, like, she, she's done it before. <laughs> like, I mentioned something about the past. And I'm like, wow, I should have known. Like, so I made this person look kind of bad. And, uh, and during this time, like I said, I had just started reading the Bible. Like, mm -hmm. probably a year before, I had an experience where I, I gave my life to God and started seeking Him intently, like, uh, seeking him for sure, you know, and meditating. And uh, so they knew I was Christian already, and I felt bad for ending up doing that later on. But anyways, so I talked bad about her for a moment, and then, uh, so I wrote down the whole situation here, so I'm going to skip what, what actually happened. <laughs> the details. <laughs> the details, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so here we go. Well, then later that day, <laughs> this was Wednesday. I remember Wednesday church days. <laughs> later that day, here, where am I? We went to church. We were a little late, and then they put, like, a little clip on the projector about forgiveness, and I automatically thought, oh, God, probably let them put this clip on because of me. <laughs> so, and I even wrote LOL, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> them. Then we did worship, and I forgot what song they put on, but that one touched me, and I remembered what happened, and I asked for forgiveness. Well, then, when the worship was over, Brother Tony, if Tony, if you're watching this, Vivian, Vivian, let Tony know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Tony was actually preaching that day, and his preaching was about not talking evil of your brother and not slandering, because slandering is when you speak evil of your brother, and one verse he had said was James 4.11. So, do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. James 4.11. So, uh, when he said that, I automatically thought, wow. <laughs> like, God has been speaking to me these past, like, two days about slandering. And I had no, I didn't, and I thought about it, too, when I was reading it. I'm like, I should look this up in the dictionary. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, like, I had that thought come into my head, and I didn't do it. And uh, so when he got up there, and he started preaching and started preaching, I'm like, oh, that's why they put up the forgiveness clip. <laughs> and he started teaching about slandering, and he mentioned the definition of what it was. 
I was like convicted, like my heart was convicted. Like, God, you've been trying to speak to me this whole time. This opportunity, this this moment was going to happen. And I used it instead of like showing your character. I used it showing a sinful character. Mm-hmm. And so I felt horrible. I asked God for forgiveness. And then, uh, but I still had it in my heart. Like, God, I made you look bad. Like, God, I made you look bad. <laughs> and uh that's it. I went to church. Let me see. But God knows I asked for forgiveness. And I know he forgave me because I did it from my heart. Then on Thursday night when I was reading the Bible, I got these verses from God. First Peter 4. That whole chapter, and I was very happy for it because I know I'm God's and he takes care of me and loves me so much that if I sin, he teaches me and instructs me himself with his word, which makes me so happy because he speaks to me and shows me his glory. I especially love these verses he gave to me. In this first Peter 4, 12 through 19, I didn't write it down, but uh, I wrote down one part, the verse 14. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he's blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Um, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. And I felt that was comforting to me because I felt so bad for doing this. I'm like, I just made you look so bad. <laughs> and I felt like I was suffering. And then he gives me that, like, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, or as an evildoer in other people's matters. So um, that brought me comfort. But, and I also saw that how his word will correct me and it will instruct me. And that's one of the ways where he, his word is alive and active. It's not, I'm just reading this verse and that's it, just to memorize it. Mm -hmm. But it's, I'm reading his word because this is the way he speaks to me. I'm speaking back to him through prayer. There's some people who pray to God and then they automatically hear his voice. (laughs) And then uh, they can do that. They have that ability. They've learned to distinguish his voice, to have Mm -hmm. that discernment. Through me, it's been through the word. And to some people, you might be asking like, well, that probably just happens to you. (laughs) Or like, how can he do that? Or you don't believe that? If you don't believe he can speak to you through his word, then when you read it, you're going to be saying, oh, this is probably just my head. This is probably just me. Uh, You have to learn. You have to have that open heart to be able to want to hear God. And not just that, but you have that open heart to want to hear God. But he'll teach, like for me, through this example, I didn't really necessarily hear it the first time because, you know, it was like a matter of three days. (laughs) And I started learning from there on. This was me 10 years ago. (laughs) If you know my testimony, you know, I I wasn't raised in church. I came later on and I was healed and that's how it happened. And this is the way I started getting to know God is real. He is listening to me. He's seeing every moment that I'm doing. And even though I didn't necessarily get it that first time, he had to speak to me various times. I had to learn how to end up listening to the word of God where I didn't know I could hear his voice before, but he taught me and he would teach me through dreams and through this, these things talking to me multiple times so mm-hmm. I can know this is me speaking to you. This is me telling you this. <laughs> it's just being willing, that mm-hmm. willingness and willing to be um, like to practice that discipline. Yeah. And making it a priority in your life. Yeah. And like if you guys see part one, I had mentioned how last night before we're doing this uh, series right now, last night I read, was it Matthew 10 verse 5? And it says like, do not go to go out and preach not to the Gentiles or Samaritans. Uh, or was it Samaritans? But he says to go out to his lost sheep, mm-hmm. which is his people, the ones in church already, and tell them the kingdom is at hand. And for that, it didn't take me days. It was just like automatically, I was like, God, before I go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like I was, before I was, I was preparing for this and I'm like, but I still want to hear what you want to say to me right now. Mm-hmm. Not just what I had already prepared and what you had already told me. So, and then I opened it up and it was that. So now it's just, I can be able to discern it more and now it's more easily. <laughs> Where before it was just like, he, I had to learn how to listen to his voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to share? How? Um, yes, I'll share mine. Uh, so I did. A, I'm going to give you guys an example of a soap that I did. Um, it's Psalms 8, 3 to 4, where it says, When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about us? 
or about them, human beings that you should care for them. So at times, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes um, I do feel alone. I do feel like uh, God may be, not, I know he doesn't forget about us, but you know, with everything that goes on, sometimes we feel like, does he even care? Does he, is he even like, does he not see what's going on? And so um, if you look at the, the chapter, it's a song from King David pondering on the words, wonders of God, how a good, a God so great and marvelous, creator of all things, spends more than a second thinking about us. So we're meditating not only on just this song that, that King David wrote, but at the wondrous and marvelous and great God that we serve. And so in those days that I feel that way, I always like to, I come back to this. Sometimes the Holy Spirit reminds me when I'm starting to get into that headspace where, you know, I feel forgotten or I feel like God isn't present. You know, I, it's always uh, nice to feel God's presence around you, but um, sometimes that feeling won't be there. But you have to have that firm faith that he is still present in your daily life and thinking about us, thinking of he hasn't forgotten us. I know the circumstances right now seem chaotic and it's just like, where's God? Where's God? But he's thinking about us. He's in control. He's a sovereign God. So um, as I prayed for, through that verse, I asked God to remind me of that every single day remind me when i'm feeling that way that the god that created this night sky and being able to see the wonders and you know i drive to work and i see the mountain view every time and i look at those mountains i'm like wow like that's that's the god i serve that's the god that created me and that loves me and thinks about me and so i'm um, holding on to that verse every single day is has been allowing me to wake up with a thankful heart and also with that peace and joy that I'm not alone in this walk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how she's been getting it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I hope you, uh, you guys are encouraged that he can speak to you. And if you had that question, am I able to hear the voice of God? Are you able to, or if you haven't been able to, when was the last time I heard the voice of God? You guys can hear it every day. You guys can have that conversation with him every day. And it's not going to be a whole revelation like mm -hmm. Kimberly. Yeah. <laughs> this, you, um, you'll get to know him. You'll get to know your relationship like in other relationships too, you know. It's, it's just building, being willing and starting and starting off with prayer too. Yeah, with other relationships, you guys can be talking about the same thing again. <laughs> and it's, you know, you guys... Not that you run out of things to talk about with God, but um, with people, sometimes you'll be relearning something else, re uh, going through a book again, and he's going to show you something else in a different way. So if you guys saw my journal right here, uh, I would read and write what, I, what happened to me in my journal. That's how journaling, you know, they teach you in the world, like write down what you did. Mm -hmm. So that's how I first started. And then when afterwards, it was all of a sudden now, I don't know if you can zoom in or not, <laughs> but now all of a sudden it's uh, not just how my day went, but it's what I read in that day, and I meditated on a certain piece of the scripture. So if I read a whole chapter, I there's a parable that I would like write down, and then writing it down helped me out, not just know what I read, but memorizing it word for word now, mm -hmm. and then memorizing, like, I noticed that the word Lord is capitalized. Mm -hmm. So that's talking about God. Uh, or when it's uh, a he, the word he is capitalized, that's talking about him too. Mm -hmm. I started realizing other things. The word and, oh. The details. Yeah, I started realizing the details. He wants this and this part. So it's not just one part only. Or when the word is or or but. Mm -hmm. I started realizing all these different things and I started being able to know his character more, who he is more. So um, my journaling changed, the way I, God spoke to me in the beginning changed, and it says that in the Bible too, at first you're going to be fed that milk, like a baby, you know, he's going to feed you the milk, he's going to give you the good stuff, I love you, <laughs> he's going to teach you who he is, and then later on it's going to be the more solid food, and then, oh, I'm learning way more about you now, mm -hmm. and your character, and then... Um, you can talk about Revelation later, because <laughs> Revelation, the book of Revelation, Revelation is different too. It's not really milk. <laughs> it's heavier. Yeah, it's heavier. Are you ready for that that steak? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm so happy Gabby was here and sh sharing, and then we get to share and then learn about other methods mm -hmm. and different experiences. 
and then we each have our own walk we each have our own testimonies our own paths and then to be able for you guys to see that too yeah we hope this all helped you guys if Mm -hmm. and gave you guys ideas of uh, different ways you can study the word um and let us know how that goes i mean i'm i would be happy to hear how Mm -hmm. god's you know speaking to your life how you're being transformed through his words how your day just starts differently you know it's a beautiful transformation to see yeah Mm -hmm. i'd be so excited to hear those testimonies too like i didn't do this before i had the bible verse app (laughs) (laughs) verse of the day and now my life is totally different now i can handle what's coming my way with all these protests and everything and i'm still able to have that peace that surpasses all understanding and that joy that comes from the lord and and that's my strength comes from the lord and all these different things where you're you have a stronger foundation now and you're not easily moved with the winds and all the news and the chaos that's happening. But now you're focusing on him on the day and on the night. And you have that, like how even in the world, that meditation, mindfulness meditation, where it's, they have these other benefits. But imagine with God mm-hmm. and that reverse of those heart diseases. <laughs> so don't miss out on all those benefits and promises. Take yeah. advantage of them. Yes. They're there for you to take yes it's all bbs <laughs> it's all dbs okay i hope you guys had fun <laughs> i hope you guys had that joy of the lord that honey and we'll see you guys next time yes. <laughs> let us know how it goes love you guys